2024 was a great year for e-commerce. We ended up generating over $5 million in organic revenue for over 40 clients in the last 12 months just with SEO. And the reason why we've been success so successful helping these brands two, three, five, even 10x their organic search revenue with SEO has been because we focused on a couple of the big unimovers that bring proven results to our clients time and time again. When we onboard a client, we break down their SEO strategy into three segments, technical, on-page, and off-page. Very simple, that's it. And by just focusing 90% of our attention on optimizing these three components, We've been able to help this brand grow from $3,000 a month to $315,000 a month in under 63 days. Another brand grow from $20,000 a month to $50,000 a month in four months. And another brand grow from $12,000 a month to $92,000 a month in 11 months. And those are all just purely organic search revenue, all driven by SEO. So in this video, I'm going to go over those three core SEO pillars and go into detail on specifically like what we actually do within those pillars. Okay, because there's a lot, there's a lot of noise. And I just want to talk about the real core elements of each pillar. I'm also going to break down the tools like SEMrush and Particle that we use to generate tons of organic traffic for our clients and identify new keywords, new products, all that good stuff to help us win in 2024 and obviously next year in 2025. For those of you that are new to my channel, my name is Kai Cromwell. I'm the founder of Newsies, an e-com SEO agency that specializes in helping seven, eight, and nine figure Shopify brands maximize and scale their organic search revenue. So without further ado, let's get to the video. First and foremost, number one pillar, technical SEO. I get into battles all the time on LinkedIn, YouTube, even Twitter with keyboard warriors over this next comment, but I truly believe that technical SEO is a gigantic waste of time for 99% of e-commerce stores out there. Most agencies, most freelancers will try to sell you on spending, will try to sell you on weeks of technical audits and optimizations. I will not do that to you. If we work together, we will spend less than four to five hours on it, probably in total. One of our recent clients spent over $4,000 on technical SEO for weeks with another agency. And after weeks of work, they had zero extra dollars to show for it. Um, what's even worse is they were working on the Shopify store, which is all we work on. And this agency missed two of the biggest known technical SEO like limitations slash issues with Shopify stores that every single Shopify store has. They didn't even address that. So gigantic waste of money. <clears throat> when we took over, we fixed everything in the first 72 hours. Really, it was like four to five hours of actionable work. Um, here's how you can do the same. Uh, Robots.txt file. First thing we tackle for the majority of our Shopify stores is their robots.txt file. When we do this, we can take care of like, I'd say 50% of the issues right off the bat in one location. Um, we want to make sure the tag pages, vendor pages, and product type pages are not being indexed. Very simple setup. It takes two minutes, maybe three, if you've never done it before. And I guess it's going to take care of like half of the issues that any audit, like anyone that is trying to say on audit, it's going to take care of half those issues right away. Next up, canonical tags. So we fix pagination issues by implementing proper canonical tags. You know, we don't want to have like page one, page two, page three, all indexed. We just want parent level page indexed. Okay. Same thing goes with the canonical tags for the product and collection pages. Um, if you navigate through Shopify store, it shows you like, you know, collection slash collection name slash product slash product name. We just want to show dot com slash product slash product name. Okay. Another very simple fix. Take care of that right away. Now you've solved probably 80 to 90 percent of your issues next up schema markup this is kind of a nice to have not a must have but it is it does work we want to ensure that like products product prices availability customer ratings things like that are all properly communicated to search engines and also to users within serps implementing breadcrumb list schema for navigation paths product schema for product details so like if you're selling like clothes like sizing things like that offer schema for pricing uh, stock levels and aggregate rating schema for product reviews which will actually show up in the search results if done correctly like i said nice to have but it does help your product stand out in SERPs. And in my experience, it's a super big value add to improving click-through rates. Good thing to have. Also, if you're going to update your Shopify theme and you've already added schema, make sure you check it to make sure it's still there. You may have to do it again. Last but not least, easiest win here, probably outside the robots.txt file, broken links. So broken links, essentially click on a link, whether it's a hyperlink, a backlink, whatever, lands on a page or site that is broken. 404, whether it was never there, whether the URL is wrong, whether whatever. Need to fix those. Just use a tool like Screaming, Screaming Fraud to crawl your site for 404 errors. Super easy. Then repair the broken link, like go to the actual page and repair it, set it to the, the correct URL, or use it, set up a 301 to 301 redirect to essentially handle it across the entire site. If you're a total beginner, all these things, these four items I just talked about, should take you no more than a couple days, even if you're even if e is like your side hustle after your nine to five. Okay. There's so many Shopify forums, there's so many YouTube videos out there that will walk you through all these things. Just go look them up and do them. Please don't pay HC for this kind of stuff. This is elementary stuff. Don't get sold on page speed and other minor optimizations. Those things don't matter nearly as much as some people would make you like lead you to believe. Focus on these four things, you will account for 99 percent of any technical SEO issue that Shopify will throw at you. And that is barring that your site has like some enormously difficult technical um, element to it. Your big SEO wins will come from content and links. So let's get to those. On page SEO, the process I'm about to walk you through for on page is the exact process that we use for every single one of our brands. And it has quite literally never failed me. Um, just last month, enabled one brand to rank for 902 money page keywords um, in the top three spots of Google. Previously, I think they were ranking for like two or 300, a huge, huge win for them. So let's start with collection optimization, collections you currently have. I have a video 
video on how to optimize collections on my channel. So go check that out. If you've already got that set up, you can go with further optimization. That's what I'm walking through here. Okay. So it's, I like just, it's collect our collection optimization workflow on a page by page level. You will analyze that page in search console and essentially find which queries for that page are like underperforming. So keywords or queries, I can think about that, that the pages are ranking for, but not as highly as they should be. I would look for like keywords that are kind of in the range of like five to 12, five to 15. You can even stretch it out to as much as 20 if you don't have a lot of keywords in that five to 15 range. Add those keywords into your content, you rank higher, you make more money, all good things. If you're using like ChatGPT or Claude or whatever, right? Collection descriptions, not bad. Just make sure you like have a pretty heavy human element on it. I have seen agencies, I work with a brand now, work with an agency for like a year. They wrote all their collection page content with ChatGPT. Their collection descriptions were like 2000 words. Okay, like longer than most of their blog posts. No one buying a product wants to read 2000 words. They simply don't. So it's not a $50 product, which is what this brand sells. When we got the brand on board, we trimmed it down immediately to like 800 words, which honestly is still pretty long. I'd like to get it down to like four or five, 600 word range, but cutting it in over half is still a big win for us. Once we get it down to like the highly targeted user focused content that was actually going to address a customer that was like actively in the market for this, their rankings took off. Um, I actually just dropped that case study, so you go check that out. Check out the video I have on collection pages. I would recommend checking that out. However, brief kind of like highlight on that 50 to 100 word description above the product grid, kind of intro the collection, target keyword in the first sentence, all that good stuff. Product grid, then below the content have like three, four, five or more words about the content, like speaking more to your USPs, things like that. Obviously target keyword, any semantic versions of that keyword in there a few times. And then an FAQ section to address like any main comments or any main questions, excuse me, about the collection. Next up, creating new collection pages. Without fail, I have never seen, I've never worked with a brand who has created every single collection they possibly could create. Most brands in my experience make the mistake of limiting a SKU to one collection. And this is dumb because it immediately caps you, puts like a low ceiling on how much money you can make with SEO. You obviously don't want to put a ceiling on that ever. I work with a client that sells puzzles. Four SKUs, that's it. The previous agency only created three collections targeting ultra competitive keywords like jigsaw puzzles, I think it was. This is a brand new company. They had no chance of ranking for a keyword like that. So in the, instead of just like building a ton of backlinks and praying that in six months, you know, this site might rank, what I did was I just like kind of brute forced my way through it. I identified 35 new potential collection pages that targeted different occasions for puzzles. And you'd be surprised, but like wedding anniversary puzzles, birthday puzzles, um, holidays like Christmas, Thanksgiving puzzles, and even seasonal puzzles like winter, summer. I found the keywords initially and like validated the search volume with SEMrush, but then I used a tool called Particle to validate the potential revenue. Um, as I find like SEMrush and Ahrefs lately have been super inaccurate on search volume. For Particle, I used the Product Explorer tool. I typed in Jigsaw Puzzles and analyzed the data just to see what kinds of puzzles were being sold the most and at what price and at what like sales volume slash sales velocity. Every collection featured exactly, every single of the 35 new ones that I created featured exactly the same products, the same products, the H1, the meta title URL and the optimized content were the only things that differed on that. And with 35 new hyper targeted, like specific collections, their SEO conversion rate skyrocketed from 1.33 to 3.19, 139% increase that directly impacted their bottom line and is now quite literally grown their revenue by seven and a half. It's a good goal to create as many collections around, if you're like a marketplace, like as many brands as you have, as well as like materials, colors, features, things like that, that your product may have. You sell leather sofas. Okay, don't just have a leather sofa collection. Don't put all your eggs in that one basket. That keyword is way too competitive. Instead, create a collection for leather sofas, brown leather sofas, uh, reclining leather sofas, leather, brown leather sectionals, leather sectionals, whatever. Anything with a decent search volume and also like matches how people actually shop. The search volume will look a lot lower than sofa. However, it's less competitive and it's also going to be a higher converting keyword. This is what you are looking for. Easier wins that make you more money. That is like the best thing you could ask for in e-commerce. Final piece of on-page. Some people may consider it technical. Some people may consider it off-page. I'm putting in the on-page group internal linking. We create what we call collection clusters, groups of related content that all link to each other and ultimately funnel traffic to money pages. For example, let's go use a leather sofa one. A blog post about how to choose a leather sofa for your apartment should link to both the leather sofa collection and to other related blog posts about leather furniture, whether it's like leather furniture care, leather furniture, like another buying guide, maybe it's like leather, how to buy leather furniture for your home, whatever. All those links together, all then push links down to the money page, just how the money page ranks higher and you make more money. This is like quite literally forcing Google to understand the relationship between your content. Also, you're building links like backlinks on top of that. It will help distribute the ranking power to those, to the money page, which is where you again, make money. And at the end of the day, it's going to establish you as an authority on leather sofas, which again, third time's a charm, how you make more money. Last up, off-page SEO. So SEO is not at all what it used to be. Okay, it used to be 10 blue links. If you were on page one, that was pretty good. No longer the case. Google's got more ad spots. There's Reddit in the top few SERPs. There's YouTube. There's all these new like SERP features, all that like honestly bad stuff lately. If you want to make money with SEO, you have to exist in the top three spots. Four and five, maybe there's some caps on the table, but it's not a lot. If you're on eight, like position eight, nine, 10, like the bottom page one, guarantee you no one's going to see you. If you are on position eight, nine, 10, you will make very, very precisely, you'll make $0 with SEO. So to get to the top three spots, which is where you should 
be. You absolutely need backlinks, no questions asked, without a doubt. Handful of ways to get backlinks, handful of ways to pay for them, whatever. Most agencies will try to sell you on guest posts. I will tell you right now, the reason they want to do that is because they're operationally very scalable and they are good margins for the agency. But because they're good margins for the agency does not make them good for you. The stack we currently run with at our agency, Reactive PR and link insertion, okay? Reactive PR is good. It used to be called Harrow. Harrow's now been sunset. It got sold to Connectively and then Connectively got sunset a couple days ago. But there are other tools out there, Source Bottle, Quoted, things like that, even Twitter. It's good. One of our clients just this last month, a Reactive PR and them high quality or high authority links from sites like Yahoo Finance, which is DR92, MSN, also DR92, CNN, DR93, and American Express, DR91. These are good. We sprinkle in like two, three, four of these a month. It is nice. However, what I attribute most of our backlink success to, link insertions. So instead of writing guest posts, which is like find a website, pay a fee, write a post, get a link back to you, link insertion is essentially find a page on a traffic website and then find a page that has traffic specifically, man, like edit the suggest and edit to the content with a link back to your site. 20 to 40% cheaper on average per link in my experience, no content creation, so it's faster. And it's way more effective because the pages, as you are validating them with traffic, they already have authority. Like they already have value, which means they can immediately pass value to you. The issue with guest posts is if they don't have any inter internal links or any promo going to them, those guest posts are just gonna sit there as an orphan page and they're not gonna pass any value to you. I don't care what the DR is. If it doesn't have traffic or doesn't have links, it's worthless. It sucks, but it is, that's the truth. To find link assertions, you need to find sites that have good domain, good traffic, like good domain traffic across the board. And then obviously page level with traffic. The other thing too, is you should make sure these are niche relevant. We work with like a kayaking brand, for example, kayaking, not a lot of kayaking sites out there. We try to use them all, but to expand our wheelhouse a little bit, we go for like, you know, outdoor adventure, travel, even like boating magazines, like or boating like websites, things like that. Honestly, for most websites, we're probably building between like five and 10 a month. For some bigger sites, we're like 10 to 15. Mix of homepage, collection page, and blog post target URLs. I would much rather build five to 10 link insertions a month than try and spend, or then spend all my money on trying to build like proactive or reactive PR links, okay? Honestly, right now, link insertions are crushing and that's what I'm doubling down on. So majority of the big wins we've had for our clients this year in 2024 have been a res direct result of the SEO tactics that I just shared with you. There weren't a lot. There were like seven or eight things there. Um, and because we focus on these big seven or eight needle movers, I, I just know like we're tuning out the noise and we're, we're doing these things at work all the time. And I'm so confident that I believe we're gonna, we're gonna keep doing these seven, eight things all the way through 2025, probably 2026 without getting too ahead of myself. The key to getting higher, like an outrageously good high ROI on SEO, especially for e is focusing on what actually works at scale rather than chasing vanity metrics or every like shiny new object you've heard about. You need to bring tangible results all the time. Make sure to follow me on X and LinkedIn where I regularly share new findings like this and strategies that are working for our clients. And if you're a Shopify brand doing about 100K a month and you're ready to get off the paid ads hamster wheel and two to three X your organic search revenue, book a free discovery call with myself. Find the link in the description below and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.